first today. Father God, help my unbelief mm. and forgive my sin. Yes. In Jesus' name. I um, have been wondering what to speak about um, and the word idols came into my mind. Idols. Idols. And I started thinking about and saying to Abba, Abba Father. I call God Abba. Abba in, in the Hebrew is Aleph, Bayet, Bayet Aleph. And it means my son pitches my tent with me and my father pitches my tent with me. So if you hear me say Abba, that's why. Um, I love it. It's brilliant. And I said, so idols. Okay, well, we haven't got any idols. Every our house is good. There's no totem poles. There's no... Um, obelisks, there's no doodads or is there or is there or is there idols in our home in your home at home too no I don't stuff it so I started looking in the scriptures and I thought okay well that's the best place to go, however if you want me to speak on this then you need to help me so he said right I will go to your favourite book Exodus, your favourite chapter verse 20 and read the first six verses, and I said, I will. So, then Abba Father spoke all these words, saying, if you'd like to go there to uh, Exodus 20, verse 1, sorry. Then Abba Father, because he is Father, isn't he? Spoke all these words, saying, I am Adonai. Adonai is Hebrew for Master. I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, I look at that, I love that scripture because when the Israelites were released by Abba Father, they had a 210 kilometre walk. That's how far it is from where they were to where they had to go. They spent 40 years trying to get there and it's amazing because no one for a second said, oh gee, I've seen that mountain before. <laughs> In the middle of all of that, Moses went up to a rock with a stick, his staff, he went tap. And enough water came out of that to fill Sydney Harbour. Wow. Okay? The reason I say that to you, it, it, it watered three million people and livestock. Okay? Having had horses and stock myself and cattle in the past, they don't drink one or two litres, they drink as much as they can get. So that's amazing. I look at that and go, wow, I bought you out of this place and I fed you all the way. And then he says in Exodus 20 verse 3, you will have no other gods, little g, before me. You, that, that's not a request. You will have no other gods before me. Exodus 20 verse 4. Do not make for yourself a graven image. I've often wondered what that meant. A graven image. I thought, I've got to find out what that means. And that was my mistake, I did. Or any likeness of anything that is in the earth, above or on the earth, below or in the water, under the earth. So pretty well anywhere. Don't have one of these things. Don't make one and don't have it anywhere. Exodus 20 verse 5, do not bow down to them. Now the Egyptians were good at that. The Romans were even better. I'm going to tell you a little something about them shortly. Do not bow down to them. Do not let anyone make you serve them. In other words, don't let anyone force you into something which is in direct contravention to your faith. For I, Adonai, your God, am a jealous God. He's jealous over us, like a chicken over her hens. Bringing forth the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, says Abba Father. Up to verse 6, but showing love kindness to the thousands of generations of those who do love me and keep my mitzvah, my, my, my commandments. And I read that and I thought, well, mate, you're smart. Have you got any idols? Of course I haven't. I've got these 
his wonderful friends here, Simon and Zoom, we've known for what, 10 years, brother? Mm -hmm. My wife, we married 10 years, I've met all these wonderful people here, we get to minister together, we get, I haven't got the idols. Oh, oh yes, I do. Yes, I did. What's an idol? Okay, well, I'm glad you all asked. You're going to turn. Okay. So, I said, I, I love reading the word and I love the interpretation of the Hebrew and the Chaldean and the Greek. So I thought, okay, well, what, is an idol? What, is, what does God think an idol is? What does Abba Father say to us an idol is? So, as is the best thing to do in any situation, I started at the beginning. So in Leviticus 19 verse 4, the interpretation of the word idol is El El, E L space double E L, and it means good for nothing. There you go. No value, thing of nothing. That's what it means. I thought, okay, well that, that, that's good, an idol is not good for nothing. Thank you, Father. Surely that can be the only thing you think of it. No, I was wrong. Leviticus 26.30. And if you read through the scriptures, you see the same word over and over again, but it's got a different meaning. And it's got a different meaning for the circumstances of the verse, of the, of the, uh, of the uh, verses and chapter. Leviticus 26.30, um, I read there, an idol. And you can look up the, the, the scriptures. Uh, and the word there is gilul. And it means a log. Remember that because there's more to come. Then I kept going through and I saw in 1 Samuel 31 verse 9 the word orsorb. And it said an idolatrous image. A picture of an image which the owner worships and places above Abba Father or instead of Abba Father. Additionally prefers the idol worship but does not deny Abba Father just in case. Yeah. It's like saying, well, Father, I'll, have, I'll, I'll hold your hand here, but I'm going to live my life over here. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a sad story to tell you that doesn't work that way. I was listening to Mary Lynn before, and it occurred to me, our relationship with people, so I was like, you know, gee, this relationship with God's hard. It's actually not. It's only hard for us. It is, it is tough. It's a tough gig. Right? But it's a wonderful gig. But it's hard for us, you know why? Because when you get married, Lynn and I have been married for 10 years, and we're still learning each other. You know, we're still learning. And, and with her diet, it changes day by day. So that, you know, <laughs> stay on your toes. But he's already fully bottled with us. Yeah. He knows who we are. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yeah. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I know who you are. I know your heart. I know what you think. I know how you like your coffee. I know everything about you. He says to me, Mark, I know you want an F100 with a 351 Cleveland in it. I know that. Turn it into one. Great. So we can't have God just in case. There is no such thing of just in case. I believe Pastor Simon called fire insurance yeah. salvation. And I agree with that. Yeah. You can't say, yes, please, Jesus, save me. I've got a, a family member I love dearly who did that very thing um, and he came away quite disappointed. Well, I pray for him pretty well daily. Anyway, so I went on 2 Chronicles 15 verse 8. I, I, I hope I can pronounce this right. Sheik Kutz is the next interpretation for what is an idol. It's, it, this is really cool. It means disgusting. It means filthy. It means an idol, abominable, filth, Detestable. When was the last time you heard the word detestable used in a sentence? The next one was 2 Chronicles 34 verse 7. And it's Cammon, and it means the sun. Well, the Egyptians were good at that back 3,000 years ago. They had the sun god, Ra. And they figured that they would worship him. What did he do? He just gave him a desert. Isaiah 45 verse 16. The next word is Seir. T-S-E-E-R. I don't know if that's a silent T or not. This is an interesting one. I sat and thought about this for a while. It means a form. Now think about what you can have as an idol in the physical. A form of beauty. 
as if pressed out or carved out. Um, do you remember the statues in in uh, Italy and Greece? You know the yeah. with no clothes on them. Yeah. Hence, an idolatrous image, but one of beauty. I actually thought. I mean, I've known some people in my life that have been so deeply in love with their wives that they've actually not seen anything else. You know what I mean? You get some emails now, son. But there's a balance. Abba says, me first, I'm a jealous God. Yes. I'm the one that saved you. Your wife or your husband didn't save you. I did. So, you're all wondering when this is going to finish, aren't you? Never. Isaiah 57 verse 5. It's El Ale, and it means strength. And I sat and I thought about that, and I thought, what does that mean? It means strength. As an adjective, it means mighty. And then I thought about how we use our time. And you spoke about it yourself, Marilyn. In how much of our time, men, have we wasted? I used to live, we used to, my wife and I used to live opposite a boat ramp. We were like, seriously, 100 metres from the boat ramp. And it used to break my heart because every Saturday morning we would see guys, good old Aussie guys, and you'd always knew they were Aussies because the boat would be there and there'd be 12 or 14 cartons of beer out of the boat into the, into the, into the fridge and there'd be 15 bags of ice. And, and you'd see him with his wife and his two kids and he'd back the boat in. Always do it pretty well, except the little fellow that backed into the light that day. That was hilarious. And, and he, he, they were back in, they take the boat off the trailer and the guy jump in the boat with four of his mates and the wife and the kids would go home. And, I'd say, and you see the look on the kid's face, Daddy, oh, can, I, can I have some of you too? How much time we spend on watching sport? Big mighty men running up and down with the ball that contribute to sport. And where we place them, and we, and we see them. Lee and I were down, we were out with my brother in Melbourne a few years ago and we were coming back well, I had his boat on the back of my cat. We'd been out in the boat. We had the kids. We did. We actually did, yeah, we had the kids. Anyway, no, um, kids. we'd zapped around Port, Port Phillip Bay in Melbourne and we'd been down to Queenscliff and we had lunch and etc. And we were driving back and I had to stop because the lights, the, the lights had changed. So I pulled up and there was two football teams that just, they were just going into the game. And everybody that was going in from the suburb side into the stadium all had on their memorabilia. The scarves, the jackets, the, the football. One guy walking around the football, I'm going, you must be a great kid, mate, you're sitting in a seat that wide. Yeah. But, and, and that was their god. That was their idol. And it came before everything else. Jeremiah 50 verse 38. The word there is ima. Okay. And it means, now this really frightened me. I thought, wow, it means fright. Concretely an idol as a bugbear. But it means dread, fear, horror, idol, terror, terrible. Okay? But when you look at that, you go, what could possibly be an idol like that? You ever watched a horror movie? I know people that are hooked on horror movies. The more horror, the more going on there, the better. And it's their idol, because they love it. They can't wait for the next one to be out. Zechariah 10 verse 2 shows another meaning of the word idol. Teraphim, and it means a healer. Well, how could that be an idol? It means singular or plural, it means a family idol. It means an image, a teraphim. Teraphim's a turtle, I think, isn't it? I think that's the, the name. But the interesting part about that is it says it's a family idol. And I start, I thought, what on a family idol is? And then I remembered a TV show, a TV series I'd watched about Rome. And I remember a comment in that movie that was made, and the comment was that the Romans all kept family gods in the home. We, as, as sons and daughters of the Most High, we keep a Bible and we keep some study books and whatever. These guys had, and I remember seeing an image, 
and it was like a cupboard. If I was a god, I would not like to be put in a cupboard. But it was a cupboard, and you opened it up, and here was all the gods. The ones that you wanted in your hand. They had gods for the dishes. Wish they'd have one to wash the damn things. But they, you know, they had gods for the dishes. They had gods for the cupboard. So I've, I've, and I've frightened everybody. I came in this morning with all this. But there's 2,000 of them, of gods. These are 2,000 idols. And they actually are an idol, a little body thing, a little doodad. Um, I've just got to teach me something. This is for me. So I'm just going to pull a few out. There's a, 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 a god called Asus, god of the river, the Asus River. I'm the god of the river. I don't know what that means. Aqu Aquitus is the god of divine personification of being fair. Yep. Aeus Lacutius, the divine voice of the god that warned the Romans of the imminent invasion by the Gauls. Now he must have been a very short time god because the Gauls stopped. Because mm -hmm. the Romans gave the Gauls a flogging as we remember in history in 49 BC or whatever it was. So I think the god Aeus Locutus, he was pushed to the back. They had all the different gods that they needed and one, of the, one god they had a little carving and his name was Bacchus. An Italian, any Italians in the room know what Bacchus means? It's the god of wine. It's the god of wine. Now here's one, the Cardia. This, she, this one, she's the goddess of the hinge. I don't even know what that means. That's it. But it didn't say squeaky hinge. Then there's the goddess called Dia Dia. That's D-E-A, new word D-I-A, goddess of growth. All these things are designed to pull down from Yeshua, from Abba Father, mm. to take our sight off. We need to grow up, oh God, would you not? He's our everything, not our part-time thing. Then there's another one called Felicitas, personification of good luck and success. I don't need that. My God said, come boldly into the throne room and make your request known to me. I'll fix it up. In Matthew 6, he said, if you seek me first, I'll fix up everything else for you. I'm paraphrasing, but you all know what the scripture is. Then there's Fulgora, the personification of light. I'd rather it be the light switch, but anyway, it's the personification of light. You, you get where I'm going with this. There's um, Luna, the goddess of the moon. How much stuff is there out there today to manoeuvre manoeuvre and manipulate our attention away from a relationship with the one true God? Here we go. Oh, I hope I say this right, Father, forgive me. Pick us. P-I-C-U-S. It's the Italian god of woodpeckers with orac oracular powers. Someone could text me, text us or email us and tell us what oracular means. I didn't look it up. I've, I've now skipped over about 2,000 gods. Okay? And I've skipped over 2,000 reasons to not do what? Have a relationship with Abba Father. There's, a, there's one more. I can't, I, this one blew me away. Um, there's the god called Terminus. I mean, to me, that's where you get a bus. However, this is the rustic god of boundaries. Isn't it funny? He'll do anything to move our attention away. Right. Anything at all. Yeah. I did say to you about the god of the log. And I sat and I thought, yesterday I thought, what do you mean log? Where else have you talked about log? And, and he told me where. And it was Matthew 7, verse 3. And why do you take note of the grain of dust in your own log, in your own brother's eye, but take no note of the log or plank of wood yeah. which is in your own eye?
we go on with idols and we go to Acts 15 verse 20. I can see everyone's excited because we're nearly at the end of the Bible, so there can't be any more. And, but I, 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 look, I really want us to know. Yeah. I wanted me to know. Because I can't sit at home in my own sanctimony saying, I don't have a God in my life. Not, not the real God. I'm talking about the other things that... The, what, what did you talk about? You talk about? The television set. You talked about everything that takes time away. The old mate on his cards. Well, we have to stop this. And, and I don't think anybody can say they don't have an idol in their life, whatever that may be, albeit so small, that we go, oh my God, what am I going to do about this? Instead of first thing, Father, will you fix this for me? It's a habit pattern. We need to get there. Acts 15, verse 20, idolon, the definition for that is an image or likeness. Whatever represents the form of an object, either real or imaginary, so the idols can be what? Thoughts. You all know this anyway, don't you? You're all shaking your heads, yeah? Because that's, the Word tells us all these things. But I needed to know what I'm up to and then share it with you. Used of the shades of the departed, apparitions, spectres, phantoms of the mind. I mean, isn't psychiatry a great industry today? You know, if you ever watch that movie, what was it called? Um, with, with Paul Hogan, Crocodile Dundee, yeah. where he said, she said to him, oh, you know, if you, you go to a shrink, and he said, oh, not out here, love, you have a coldie, you tell your mate, he tells another mate, the problem out in the open, no worries, finish. <laughs> I mean, isn't that how I have a father, though? Yeah. Father, my problem is this. He's sitting there going, I already know it, but tell me anyway, because yeah. I want you to tell me. An image of a heathen God and a false God. There you go. So Italin means a false God. And that means that we can be fooled. We can be fooled. We can be uh, in a place where we think something detrimental to the Word of God. Because the Word of God's quite big. It's, it, it takes a bit of time to, to digest it. I've been reading it for 10 years and I'm still... Anyway. So it, it tells us that we can be manipulated if we let ourselves. We've got to keep on our mettle. This is a battle. This is not a... I don't remember anywhere except, look, come to me, it's going to be great. You know, on this earth. Because we're only renters here. Yeah. This, is, this is our biggest problem. We think we live here. We, we don't. We rent. That's all we are. If you've got a mortgage like we have, well, I don't know, I think... Don't say that. Um, yeah, I don't know. We don't live here. We exist here. We're here to serve him. The next one is in Acts 15, verse 29. I'll skip it along a bit. Well, I'm not turned too bad. It's Edeoluthutin. Another email, Simon, I'd suggest it. So it means sacrifice to idols. Now, this is disgusting. And this is what idols are in our lives. They're disgusting. The flesh left over from the heathen sacrifices... So, here we go. Um, the priests of Diana, okay, having a sacrifice, getting up, going back to their, their, their homes and leaving all the muck behind, okay, is one of our idols, chasing after muck. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 2. Verse two. Mm -hmm. Idiolon, long, okay, it's an image or likeness. Whatever represents the form of an object, either, once again, either real or imaginary, as I read before. In the King James Version, there's 101 mentions in 95 verses of the word idol. That tells me, I suspect, that Abba Father has got a certain importance placed on this. Because I think it's so easy for us to become tripped up and, and take something else on, or think of something else, or want something else, and forget to go to God. And for me, that's happened to me many times. But then I'm not used to having a father until I got saved 10 years ago, and I'm 62 ish. In the, Hebrew, in the Hebrew direct translation, there is 118 verses found by which the name idol is mentioned 124 times. Uh, okay. I've written 
many. I suspect Abba Father placed a certain importance on this, as it is the one subject that will tear us away from him. If we entertain, allow, or remain ignorant of what an idol is. So in the interest of brevity and being direct, I will tell you what it is. Anything you put between your heart and the triune being, Abba Father, Yeshua the Messiah, and the Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit. Anything at all. If we place anything between him and us, we become idolaters. Okay, he doesn't say we're a sinner for a minute or two. He says you're an idolater. I'm going to tell you where. If we choose life with him, we must give him what he wants, which is our submission to him, which is our love to him, which is our learning to creation of and being, learning to have a relationship with him. If we don't, Ephesians 5 verse 5, For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, if you want something that's not yours, you are an idolater. I can't, I'm not going to sugarcoat this, because we are in end times. We, the times are, are, are so short. We can't mess around with this. We're either in or we're out, you know. Who is an idolater? Has any inheritance? Now listen to me. Has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God? Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Mm. But be not ye partakers with them, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he will add everything to us. We don't have to think about these things, nor should we. Mm. We should every morning, Father, you first, in Jesus' name. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up. I want to explain to you what Matthew 6.33 means, and then I'm, I'm done. But seek. The word seek, zetia, yes, I've been a smart boy all week. I've been looking at Listen to me, I want to share it with you because it, it touched my heart. Zetia, the word seek. Seek ye first, seek. Matthew 6.33. Matthew 5, 6, and 7, Christianity 101, amazing. Seek, what does it mean? To seek in order to find. This is how we are to look for Yeshua. This is how we are to find relationship. To seek a thing, to seek in order to find out. By thinking, by meditating, by reasoning. Come, let us reason together and work out your salvation. Okay? To inquire into, to seek after, to seek for, to aim at. To strive after, to seek, require and demand. To crave and demand something from someone. Seek first. What does the word first then mean? Proton, first in time and place. The very first thing. Okay, of any day, of any time, in any succession. First in rank, influence or honour. Seek him first in all of these ways. Seek what? His kingdom. The word kingdom is basilia. Now, this is, I talked to, talked to Lee about this last night or this morning. Seek what? What's his kingdom? Royal power, kingship, dominion, rule. Not to be confused with an actual kingdom, but rather the right or authority to rule over one. And it's his. There's a lot more there, but I think that's the most important one. Righteousness, that word is, I'm not even going to try it. It's G1343 if anyone wants to look it up. I'm going to tell you what it means though, in a broad sense, state of him who is as he ought to be, righteous, the condition acceptable to God. So to wrap it up, so here's some of the idols and what the Father thinks of them. They are good for nothing. They are like a totem pole of no use. Yeah. They are a picture of anything you put between Abba Father and you. That picture could be something you have in your wallet, on your wall, or in your head. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have a picture of something the way life is. Have you ever heard people, oh, it used to be so great life. Mm -hmm. God. Father. They are dis disgusting, filthy, abominable, foul, detestable. They are a pillar to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. He's talking about mankind from the day it got created till today, mm -hmm. I believe. They are a pillar to be worshipped like an obelisk or something of that nature. 
They are a powerful shaped image. They represent strength, power, which we would like to have to, to become adored by the masses. An actor, famous actor, Tom Cruise or something like that. Sorry, Tom, you're probably a great guy. They are dread, fear, horror, idol, terrible, terror. Sound familiar? Horror movies, demon worship, etc. They are idols passed down in a family. Didn't I get on my knees yesterday and pray for my children? The idol also is the panic of what is happening on this earth today. Finances, houses, superannuation, medical insurances, our families, anything that we grab hold of and put before, saying, Father, can you help me please with what's going on on earth? Can you? He says he'll keep us. Why don't we believe him? I've got a lot more here, but I'm not going to go on. Actually, I might. One more. Yeah, just kidding. If you choose life, this is the ABCs. I haven't got it for that. Okay. That. ABC. Admit. Admit, believe and confess. It's really not that hard. But do it out of your heart. Don't parrot it off because we say so. Do it because it's what you want. If you choose life, love, relationship with the inventor of love. God is the inventor of love. He's the starter of it. I don't have another word. He is love. God is love. No one else is. He is. So if we choose a relationship with him, then we need not worry about anything because he's promised to look after us. I read that in Mark 6, in Matthew 6. Seek ye first me, says Father God. He cannot lie, so therefore he is truth, and we don't need the idols, only him. The law of God requires that every son and every daughter of Adam shall love him supremely. And anything that separates our affections from God and lessens our interest in eternal things is an idol. Right. Anything. Your car, your cat, your dog, I don't give a flying what it is. It will separate you from him. Those who use the precious time given to them by our Father, time that's been purchased at an infinite cost. Infinite cost. I worked in another country many years ago and I was sadly witness to a, a young girl who was stoned to death in front of me. I could do nothing about it. I could do nothing about it. But if, if I've seen sacrifice, I've seen what it means. I think I've got a rough idea of Stephen, at least. The cost that he, he gave his own son. I'll tell you right now, if someone said, I want your eldest son, Matthew, and I want to... Um, I want to hang him on a cross or I want to beat him up or shoot him or something because of something I go, you've got to take me first, mate. Mm. The fight's on. We have been purchased by uh, the maximum cost. If we spend this time embellishing our homes for display in following fashions and customs of the world, we're not only robbing our own souls of spiritual food, but we're failing to give God what he needs and wants. Because it's a relationship, it's a two-way thing. The time thus spent in gratification of selfish desires might be employed in obtaining a knowledge of the word of God and cultivate our talents that we might do meaningful service to our Creator. It is the best life ever. It is the best life ever. It has meaning. It has salvation. And you know what? If this world and the way it's going at the moment is the only thing we've got to look forward to, wow. We in this room, and I encourage you all, think about these words. Think about what it is you lay down for a relationship. Admit, admit your need. Say, yeah, my heart. You know, Don't do what I did for so many years. I wasted so much of his time. Don't do what I did. Admit your need. If you're young, seek him early, he says. You know why? Before your brain gets too polluted with all the idols. Seek him early. Get hold of this thing with God. Get on your knees. You know what? you just got to talk to him. I get up in the morning when I take my wife, I come home and say, Father, just in my laundry with my bowl of porridge. So I'm losing weight. You're all supposed to go here. Yeah, to see that. Um, you know, I'm with my porridge and my honey. And I sit there and say, Father, you first. I want you first. In everything I do, when I walk downstairs to go to my workshop, or whatever I'm doing, you first. Father, 
please help my unbelief. Mm. Please help what I can't comprehend. That's me mixing porridge. I don't have a <laughs> nervous tick. Um, <laughs> I've finished now, Holly. Um, and please forgive my sin. Yeah. Forgive my stupidity. Forgive the silly things that come out of my mouth. Forgive what's in my head that I think that I shouldn't. Please, Father, forgive me for the 40 drivers I've abused yesterday. Call on his name. There is no fix for this. What it is is, Father, bring me into your family. Yeah. Let me become your child. Let me become your son or daughter. Please let me do this. Take, I give me to you. So now you owe me and you can shape me. I'm the clay, you're the potter. Let's just close in prayer. Father God, you first. Father God, help our unbelief. Help us with the things that we don't know. Help us with the things that we need to know. And Father, forgive our sin. Lord, forgive our foolishness. Father God, we would come into your presence clean, that we would come into your presence in amazement, in an absolute wonder in Yeshua's name. Thank you all. See you next week. Bless you.